Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Coach Matt, EliteThrowsCoaching.com, Primal Athlete Training Center here in Cranston, Rhode Island. So, over the past few weeks, we have been taking video and showing all of you a little bit about the kind of road to recovery workouts that I've been doing here in the gym. And we've uh, kind of gone through and explained a little bit about some of the injuries that I've been going through. Um, you know, my elbow for over the past year, my shoulder for about the past six months, and of course the irritated discs that happened um, about two and a half months ago now. Um, that plus a lot of illness and sickness. I've been out of the gym and, well, not out of the gym, but not working out for a little while. So the workouts are more that road to recovery and you know really helping out, I hope, some of the masters athletes out there, some of the senior Olympians out there, and any of the other throwers out there that might be dealing with injury, that might be dealing with, you know, just aches and pains of just going and throwing every day and being part of a team, um, you know, things always do pop up. But what I wanted to show you today was something I've been doing specifically for my elbow. Now, what started with my elbow was about September of last year, I developed what looked like a golf ball underneath the back of my elbow. It literally looked like just somebody implanted a golf ball right on the back of my elbow. It hurt like hell, didn't know what it was. Um, kind of assumed it was bursitis. Went to uh, the emergency room. Um, they diagnosed it as bursitis, gave me a cortisone shot. The bursitis went down maybe about 90% of the way and then about two weeks later it flared up again. Um, so I actually went to um, you know, my doctor and he recommended that I go see an orthopedist who took a look at it, gave me another cortisone shot, um, was shocked that it didn't hurt or burn or anything um, and kind of knew at that point my elbow was kind of screwed. So sent me to physical therapy. The physical therapist gave me a lot of exercises, knowing my experience here and what I do for a living, basically said, just go to physical therapy once, and then they'll give you exercises to do, and then you can just do them at home until it feels better. Well, what they gave me was a lot of massage work. Now, if you've ever done massage work, you've seen things like foam rollers, uh, the stick roller massagers that kind of look like beaded uh, rolling pins, tiger tail, which is a neoprene, again, like that rolling pin type deal. And it's really hard to do that self massage on your elbow and on your tricep. And the reason for that is because you can't really get a good angle on it. Um, it's hard, especially being right handed, it's hard to get that amount of pressure when you are using one of those things because a lot of them take two hands. Um, so what I've been using is actually what I'm leaning on right here, which is the end of a uh, you know, normal two inch Olympic bar. So this is one of our York uh, weightlifting bars. And what I'm gonna show you, and I'll kind of cut to this in a second to show you, is that this bar, number one, it spins really, really, really well. It's a really nicely made bar, spins really well, but it's machined in a way so that it's basically super smooth. Some of the other bars in the gym, like our Texas Power Bars, have almost like a record, like an old vinyl record, where you can take your fingernail and scratch it and kind of make that you know, back and forth sound like a, like a zipper. This one, you can see the little machining grooves, but they're super, super, super fine, and they don't hurt the elbow, um, you know, nice and smooth. So if you have a weight bar like that, that spins really nice and is nice and smooth, you can try some of these out if you've been experiencing some elbow pain. Of course, I want to back up and say I'm not a doctor, I'm not a physical therapist. This is just stuff that I'm doing that's helping me out a lot um, and hopefully can help you guys out too. Okay, so once the bursitis went down, they found tricep ten tendonitis, they found uh, tennis elbow and all this stuff going on with my elbow, uh, obviously from years of lifting and throwing. So let me show you what I do. The first thing I do is I set the bar up in a rack. Take, get it about chest height, and I'll take my elbow and actually put my elbow on top of the bar. And I'll start to just loosely, kind of lightly roll it. My arm's not locked out, so I'm not flexing the tricep. I'm just trying to keep the arm slightly bent, and I'll get right to that tricep tendon, right where they told me to massage it out. It hurts like hell, but I'll stay right on there, and I'll just sort of pulsate back and forth right on the spots that it hurts. And as I'm doing that, I'll try to twist the hand around a little bit and hit different sides or different parts of that tricep tendon. 
So your triceps brachii is right here. And as you go around, you get right into that triceps tendon and really start to then push down. Now I'll stay on that for about a minute or two, take a break. Uh, the bar, especially this time of year, is usually ice cold, so it feels really, really good. And I'll stay on that for a little while. Then I'll move to working on the top of the forearm. So all the uh, extensors of the forearm, uh, brachioradialis, the big guy right here, I'll stay right on that, but I'll actually hold the bar down with one hand so it doesn't pop up. I'll hold the bar down with one hand and I'll start to roll on my forearm. Now your forearm can take a lot of punishment, at least mine can take a lot of punishment just from years of throwing and lifting and whatnot and working grip. So I'll start to roll and I'll roll right on it. Similar to the way that you might roll on a uh, foam roller or the way you might have a massage therapist use one of those sticks to roll you out or a coach or a trainer at your school, use one of those sticks to roll you out. We'll stay right on here and make sure that we're getting right in nice and deep, applying a lot of pressure. So manually I'm lifting my arm up and I'm pushing my arm up into this sleeve at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the camera around, I'm gonna show you guys what this bar looks like and hopefully you have one like that that you can use. We'll show you the other power bars that we have here, why it might not be the best reason or the best thing for you to use. And again, hopefully this is something that'll help you guys out. I know elbow pain is uh, definitely one of those things uh, that pops up a lot with throwers and weightlifters. So hopefully, you know, you guys out there can take this, use it to your advantage, and hopefully get rid of some of those aches and pains. All right, so here's the bar. As you can see, it's a York bar. I'll give it a spin for you. Spins really, really nice, but if you see right down here, it might be hard to see, you can barely see the grooves in the bar. So it's extremely smooth. You can see little grooves in the bar, and if I put my finger on it, you can't really hear any scraping like you would if you were to go on a record. It's not making that sound like if you were to zip your coat. So that's what I like to use. This is the bar that I use. Nice and smooth, it's ice cold normally. Uh, especially because the gym is getting cold and we'll take you over here. We'll show you one of the other ones So I'll uh, get a nice view of the floor of the gym this over here. This is like a traditional Texas power bar So we'll get these bands out of the way traditional Texas power bar. This is unfinished. So we'll get a good View for you. Hopefully this thing comes into focus and you can see it Let's see There we go. So you can see these how it's much more ridged you can see that there's a lot of deep ridges in there. And when you run your forearm and your tricep over that, you can really, really feel uh, that cutting into you. And it will leave marks on you. It will cut into you, tear out your, uh, you know, your arm hair and all that stuff. So we don't like to do that. The worst ones we have are these cheaper power bars. Now this is a 1,500 pound power bar, just a black oxide bar. You can really see. And actually, if I run my finger over it, you can hear that kind of scratching sound. So always, guys, if you can, go with the smooth one. All right, so keep tuning in. Keep checking out the channel. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, all that stuff that we normally tell you to do. And, uh, you know, hopefully this helps you out. And if you have any questions, leave them right down below in the comments section.